welcome uh, to the OSIS uh, Center for Intellectual Development. We are here today with the world acclaimed artist and a well known philanthropist, Jimmy Engineer Saab. We are delighted to welcome you, Jimmy Saab, to uh, the OSIS Center. Today, we will talk about a project. Hai जिसे हम कहते हैं आर्ट फॉर फिलेंथ्रोपी और मैं चाहूँगा कि जिमी साहब इसका थोड़ा सा एक इंट्रोडक्शन दे इफ यू कैन इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आर्ट फॉर फिलेंथ्रोपी इन योर ओन वर्ड्स एक्चुअली द माय लाइफ इज बेस्ड ऑन फिलेंथ्रोपी एंड आई एम हैप्पी दैट आई एम एट द ओ सेंटर because throughout my career i have thought of social work and social work of different levels because i think people don't have idea ke which is the higher level of social work which is slightly lower level good service people take that ambulances hospital it is good service social work of a level where you are helping people but when the world knows about it it is normal kind of social work and the highest form of social work is when you are helping people and they don't know that uh, who is helping them and if you are doing social work in the name of the creator so that is the highest form of social work so we must first understand ke what kind of social work we want to do and uh, when we call art for philanthropy it is like using the art which i created for helping people who sometimes don't have anything there are people i have seen people who have nothing except for their dreams sometimes i look at these children they don't have shoes they don't have proper clothes they don't have proper food and then i wonder you know that with so much wealth all over the world still nobody wants to change their life so we are going to try and change the lives of such kind of human beings through my art so this art for philanthropy will be purely for charity work and whatever we sell all over the world we'll use for charity because हम इंसानियत की मदद नहीं कर सकते हैं तो फिर हमारी ज़िंदगी बेमानी है सिर्फ अल्फाज से नहीं ठीक कर सकते मैं देखता हूँ कि नब्बे फ़ीसद लोग बात करते हैं बड़ी खूबसूरत बात करते हैं और लोगों को समझाते हैं लेकिन खुद नहीं करते खुद मदद नहीं लोगों को करते लेकिन वो खूबसूरत मशवरे देते हैं तो मैं कहता हूँ कि हमें खुद करना चाहिए इसीलिए मैं आपके साथ मिलकर आपके ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के साथ मिलकर मैं वो चैरिटी करने चाहता हूँ जो अल्लाह के नज़दीक भी जो सही है इंसानों के नज़दीक तो होती है लेकिन हमें वो चैरिटी करनी चाहिए जो अल्लाह के नज़दीक भी सही हो सही सही तो बिल्कुल इसलिए बहुत बहुत उम्दा ख्याल है आपके इट रियली इज़ ए वेरी लॉफी आइडिया Uh, that uh, art for philanthropy was born out of a discussion that i have had uh, with jimmy saib over the last few weeks that he has been here in houston and we said exactly what he meant what can we do so that we can become change agents we can do transformation and my whole whole life also has been dedicated as a volunteer in many different charities over the last four decades and i have seen that there are charities and there are charities there are those charities where you would like to see your name plastered all over to say many a charity kiya and then there are silent charities where we are told our faith tells us that the right hand should not know what the left hand is doing when it comes to philanthropy and charity so the website that we are going to create where people will be able to purchase the art that jimmy saib has done and by the way his art 
has sold in millions. And there are thousands upon thousands, he will tell you himself, of prints and the original art which is all around the world. What we will be doing on this website would be prints which have been uh, drawn up by him. These are not original. I must make it clear that these are prints. But these are genuine prints that have come from the originals which have been approved and signed by Jimmy Saib. So this is what we are going to do to put it on the website and then we will have people buying those. And what we are assuring our viewers is that 100% of whatever is collected through that art will actually be donated to various charities of our choice. And that is our mission at artforphilanthropy.org channel. Jimmy Saab, what do you say about this? I created an art لوگوں میں شعور پیدا کرنے کے لیے جیسے پارٹیشن میری سیریز تھی وہ میں چاہتا تھا کہ ہمارے لوگوں کو سمجھ آئے کہ جب اتنے لوگوں کی جانیں قربان ہو گئی جب آپ کے زمین میں اتنا خون بہ گیا اور عورتوں نے بچوں نے مردوں نے بوڑھوں نے جوانوں نے اتنی قربانیاں دی گیا اور ملک حاصل کیا ہے اور میں جب دیکھتا ہوں کہ ہم ملک کے ساتھ کیا کرتے ہیں تو مجھے دکھ تو ضرور ہوتا ہے لیکن میں چاہتا ہوں کہ نوجوان نسل یہ پینٹنگز کو دیکھے اور اس سے کوئی سبق حاصل کرے اور دیکھ کر ان کو چاہیے کہ ملک کی زیادہ عزت کرے تو ایک تو میں شعور پیدا کرنے کے لیے کرتا لیکن میں چاہتا تھا کہ یہی پینٹنگ سے میں جنریٹ کروں فنڈ اور میں لوگوں کی مدد کروں پھر میری آرکیٹیکچرل سیریز ہے پھر میں نے کچھ ایسے کام کیے ہیں جیسے اقبال کا جوید نامہ ہے لینڈسکیپس ہے سب چیزیں ہیں اور اصل میں مجھے لوگ پوچھتے ہیں کہ آپ اتنی ساری ورائٹی کیوں کرتے ہو پینٹ آپ ایک چیز کیوں نہیں سپیشلائز کرتے ہو تو میں ان کو جواب دیتا ہوں کہ میں طالب علم ہوں میں سیکھ رہا ہوں ابھی بھی میں سیکھ رہا ہوں لیکن میں کس کا شگرد ہوں میں اللہ کا ایک نام ہے المصور سب سے بڑے آرٹسٹ ڈیزائنر فیشنر اللہ ہے تو میں جب ان کا طالب علم ہوں ان کا اسٹوڈنٹ ہوں تو میں ماسٹر نہیں بن سکتا میں صرف طالب علم رہ سکتا ہوں کیونکہ میں سوچتا ہوں کہ میں ساری عمر سیکھتا رہوں گا اینڈ تک جب تک میری زندگی ہے میں سیکھوں گا اور میں اپنے آرٹ کو بہتر کرتا رہوں گا اپنی زندگی کے ساتھ ساتھ تو اس لیے میں نے ہمیشہ سوچا ہے کہ میں صرف اسٹوڈنٹ ہی رہوں گا طالب علم رہوں گا سیکھنے کی وجہ سے اتنے بڑے آرٹسٹ جو پرفیکٹ ہیں نیچر قدرت پرفیکٹ ہے ہم ام پرفیکٹ ہیں ہم غلطیاں کرتے ہیں ہم پرفیکٹ لوگ نہیں ہیں لیکن نیچر پرفیکٹ ہے تو بس میں پرفیکٹ ماسٹر کا ایک طالب علم ہوں تو اس لیے میں اپنے جو آرٹ کریٹ کرتا ہوں اس میں میں کوشش کرتا ہوں کہ میں اچھا سے اچھا کریٹ کروں اور اس کریشن میں سے ہم لوگوں کی زندگی بدلیں ہم جو لوگوں کو تکلیف ہے ان کی تکلیف دور کریں تو میں میری ریکویسٹ ہوگی کہ جب یہ ویب سائٹ لانچ ہوگی جب میرا آرٹ فور سیل ہوگا تو لوگ بڑھ چڑھ کے اس چیز کو خریدے ناٹ صرف یہ سوچ کر کہ یہ آرٹ پیس ہے لیکن یہ سوچ کر کہ اس سے کسی کی زندگی بدل سکتی ہے دیکھیں جمی صاحب یو آر این اکلیمڈ آرٹسٹ یہ تو آپ کی ہیومیلٹی ہے آپ کی انکساری ہے کہ آپ کہتے ہیں کہ میں طالب علم ہوں بٹ ٹو اس یو آر اے ماسٹر آف دی ٹیلنٹ دیٹ یو ہیو جو آپ نے پینٹنگس کیے ہیں دنیا بھر میں مشہور ہیں اور ہم یہ چاہتے ہیں کہ ان پینٹنگ سے لوگ کچھ نہ کچھ علم حاصل کریں اور جیسے آپ نے بتایا کہ جو آپ کے پارٹیشن کے پینٹنگس ہیں خصوصاً دے ٹچ می ویری مچ وین آئی فسٹ آف دیم بیکاز آئی کڈ سی دا پین کہ بھائی میں کتنا درد ہے ان پینٹنگس میں تو میں یہ پوچھنا چاہوں گا کہ آپ نے 
یہ کیسے آپ تو تھے نہیں پارٹیشن جب ہوا آپ کی جو پیدائش پارٹیشن کے بعد ہوئی تو آپ نے تو یہ دیکھا نہیں تو کیسے یہ آپ نے اس پین کو اور اس فیلنگس کو اپنی پینٹنگز میں کیپچر کر دیا سیونٹیز میں آئی یوز ٹو گیٹ ڈریمس آف کلنگ برننگ میس مائگریشن بٹ آئی واز ناٹ بارن ان فورٹی سیون نیدر آئی نیو اباؤٹ فورٹی سیون آئی ڈنٹ نو اینی تھنگ اباؤٹ فورٹی سیون آئی واز بارن ان ففٹی فور سو وین آئی سو دیز امیجز ان مائی ڈریمس آئی یوز ٹو ونڈر کہ وائی ایوری ڈے ڈے آفٹر ڈے آئی ایم لوکنگ ایٹ بلڈ ڈرپنگ پیپل بینگ میسکرڈ ولیج بینگ برن ٹرینس بینگ برن women being massacred, killed, women. So I used to wonder ke why every day in the early 70s I was looking at these images in my dream. So then slowly, slowly I tried to understand that this is something related to partition, 47. But why I am seeing in my dream is the reason that nature wanted me to create these paintings so that I could educate people that this is what happened. But it should not happen like this. People should not die unnecessarily for, because the people who gave their life, they never saw Pakistan. True. They died before Pakistan was created, but they gave their life. So I want the younger generation to understand that we should respect these people who don't have any names. I don't know the names of these people, but I created them to honor these nameless people. So then I started painting series after series to give honor to all those people who gave their lives. And they never saw Pakistan. They never saw our country, but they gave their life. So they already have paid their sacrifices, you know, for us that we live there comfortably. So my purpose was to one thing that because I know that when the generation of 1947 will no longer be in this world, then my paintings will be images which people can refer to. So indeed, indeed, I think this legacy of South Asia, the legacy of the Indian subcontinent is one particularly for our young people growing up in these lands in the Western world, in UK, in uh, USA, in Canada and elsewhere. They need to feel this. And your paintings, particularly the partition paintings, indeed have that particular feeling. And once again, you know, at this, uh, on this website, this is not simply a website to sell art. There are many websites that sell art. We are not a Me Too product saying we are going to be selling art. No. We are actually trying to educate the upcoming generations through this medium of art. Secondly, we are trying to transform lives through the philanthropy that we will be able to do. So in addition to the paintings that we have, we also plan to enrich that website with different articles, different blogs, different interviews, yours, other people's, who indeed have appreciated and understood your art. And one of the things that just fascinated me, when I, jab mein Lahore mein tha, aur mein jab gaya waha, Allah ma ikbal ke ghar pe, aur Javed Nama ka jo mural mein ne dekha, mein khususan dekhne ke liye gaya tha. So it, it touched me to say that art can be in so many forms, جو علامہ اقبال نے لکھا ناٹ مینی پیپل کین ٹرانسلیٹ یو نو دیٹ انٹائر جاوید نامہ ان ٹو اے پیس آف آرٹ وچ از جسٹ سمپلی ریمارکیبل اینڈ آئی بلیو اٹس اے ماسٹر پیس سو ٹیل اس اے لیل بٹ مور اباؤٹ جاوید نامہ جی ایکچولی دا جاوید نامہ واز اے ویری امپارٹنٹ رائٹنگ آف علامہ اقبال آور نیشنل پوئٹ But uh, he had written at a couple of places that he, it was his desire 
that some artist should paint Javednama. But then he himself was writing that uh, only an artist will not be able to paint Javednama unless he has ilame ilahi or higher sense developed. So I used to paint partition from dreams. So one day the son of Ilama Iqbal, Dr. Javed Iqbal, invited me over to his house. I went there, I met him, and he showed me letters, and he said, okay, I'm interested that someone should fulfill the dream of my father. So I said, I will do it. So then I stayed one year at his residence and finished the painting in one year. But I completed the, the dream which his father had that somebody should paint Javednama. I fulfilled his desire also, Javednama. And uh, it was not easy to paint that painting because it's very difficult. Otherwise, if it was so simple, then many artists from our Indo Park would have done paintings on this subject, but they did not do it. So I feel happy that I could feel, I could fulfill the wishes of our national poet. And uh, there were a lot of things in Javed Nama, which was a prediction of the future. Yes. The many things was, I can give you an example from that thing. Like when I was painting, then Russia was one country. And I painted the symbol of Russia on the globe. And somebody asked me, okay, what is this? So I said, this is breaking of Russia. But when it happened later, then people said, oh, that's true. It happened. Then there were a lot of things like when Ilama Iqbal and Rumi reached Mars, mm. the scientist was asking that, how come you have come to Mars? So he's saying that humans have progressed and they have come to Mars. There are many other things that uh, are important for future that the, uh, the Muslim countries are not united. There was a celebration of the old gods who were rejoicing that all the Muslim countries are not united. So they are rejoicing. So all these things you can imagine that he wrote so many years back when there was nothing like this and uh, still predicted all these things in his poetry. Indeed. And I was able to paint it. Yes. So it was an important thing. But one thing I want to come back to this sure. partition thing. Yes. I will tell you an interesting thing, that when I first exhibited two of my paintings in an exhibition which had many other artists, I saw humans standing in front of my painting with tears. And I was looking at them carefully, okay, why they are in tears. So I asked those people, okay, why is the tears in your eyes? They said, we are thinking of our mothers, our grandmothers, fathers, Indeed. who were slaughtered, killed. So those tears at that time gave me enough encouragement that what I've painted, if it can move people, if the I have given respect to their memories. So then I think I contributed. My intention of contribution was in the right direction. So that was the thing. Wonderful. Yeah, I think that is uh, so very noble. And absolutely, Alam Iqbal was such a visionary. That's why, you know, he is, he really is called the poet of the East. To me, he's a universal poet with, with what, what he has. And one could, you know, equate him to the thoughts of Maulana Rumi as much as. The sad part is that Alama Iqbal is not as well known as Rumi is in the Western world today. Rumi is the best read poet in, in the USA. But we need to redress it. And through some of these works of the rich treasures of South Asia, of the Indian subcontinent, that we have a responsibility to not only promote this you know, to the wider Western society, but to me, more importantly, that these values are inculcated in the South Asian diasporic generation that is growing up here. I'd like you to also tell our viewers about a couple of these architectural paintings, mm -hmm. 
what is it what is you know how do you uh, compose for example we have this painting here just give us a, a little flavor of what this is because we have a number of architectural paintings and the prints that, that are present here at the Oasis Center. Actually, I always try to create things which are original, original ideas, original philosophies. And I used to wonder, you know, that why people are aggressive to each other, countries aggressive to each other and things. So I said, why not create architecture of different countries and put them together and see whether they balance or they don't balance. So when I put architecture of different countries and then I put architecture of my own country from different places together, I said, look, the painting looks so calm. It's so peaceful and calm. So then I call these series of architecture as series of harmony and peace. Because I believe I could paint a mosque with a church, mandir, all these various things together, or different buildings together, and they seem so peaceful. So I said, why can't human beings also live peacefully from different countries, different beliefs? So my purpose was to create harmony and peace. So I had to create a new kind of style of painting by composing all these buildings. They're very complex. But then I have a higher level of sixth sense, which tells me whether this building balances in this place or it doesn't balance, or is it looking good or not good. So all this, I have this inner ability to understand. So I was able to paint these very complex kind of paintings. And they were not easy because they are very complicated. But then I was able to paint over 70 paintings of this nature of peace and harmony, architectural series, international, local, to create a new kind of dimension, new kind of style in the world of art. So I created this painting as bringing countries, people together by architecture. So let's look at this painting, for example, that we have behind us, maybe a couple of these. Just give us a little glimpse in terms of some of the features that one should be looking for in a painting of this nature. I was looking like, you know, the buildings which had domes. Now, if you place the building which have domes, not in the right place, they would not look good. So I had to select every place to be the right place. Like you see the domes coming down like this. Yes. So it has a balance. Now if I put something here, there, everywhere, it wouldn't have been balanced. So to balance also, every architectural painting has a balance. And every building is balanced with the next building. And if I wouldn't have balanced it properly, it wouldn't look good. So you can just imagine that 70 paintings to check that they are balanced properly, oh. their colors, their form in the right place was also very challenging. But because this is the way I see, because when I was young, when I started my career, I could see uh, images on empty surfaces. I could imagine. Mm. I could imagine, if I look at the sky, I could imagine images in the sky. If I look at the walls, I can see the images. I can see the complete image there. There's nothing there. So the same way on the canvases, I can see images how, where I should place and how I should, even if you see my partition, everything is very balanced. There's nothing jumping up and down or something disturbing or things like that. So this was my training of my inner ability to put things in the right place. And the colors, the form, everything should be in the right place. So like I'll give you example. In this painting, there's a church. There's a mausoleum there. There. And there is a church here. 
it is next to a railway station here. Yeah. So in the same way, there are paintings, then the mosque is there, up there, there's a mosque, the church. So I brought everything together, things of different religion, beliefs, everything together. And they are looking very harmoniously. So, so I think that the world can take example Indeed. from these paintings Indeed. that we can all live harmoniously whether we belong to any religion yes. or any belief. Yes. So the website will actually contain descriptions of every one of these buildings that are in the painting so people would understand the whole idea of harmony. So, Jimmy Sahib, to, um, to bring this um, uh, segment to an end, uh, there is one painting that also touched me very much when I first looked at it, and that is the painting of the fasting Buddha. What was your thinking behind, uh, I think we have the fasting Buddha uh, is, uh, right there. These uh, are paintings related to old civilization. It's not only Gandhara. There's Monjo Daro there, there's the priest, and there's the fasting Buddha. And there. Because, you know, uh, we neglect things of the past. We neglect. We sometimes go to the museum to see, and sometimes we neglect. So I wanted to give importance to the old civilization, Gandhara, Buddha from the Gandhara period, then Monjodaro and all these things. So to give importance to the old civilization, I painted the series. I painted many paintings. There are only a few here, but I painted many which have not been documented also. Because I wanted to preserve the past. Because people without understanding the past, without understanding history, they cannot move forward. So we must learn actually what happened in the past. And we should try and improve for the present and future. So I painted these old civilization paintings because I found them very artistic. And there also composition is very challenging, not easy. It's very complex. All these compositions are very complex kind of composition. But I manage them well because, uh, as I told you, that I can see things on empty surfaces, so I can easily manage these things. So talking about the future, and indeed history is very important. Without history, we don't know. If you don't know where we came from, then it's hard to know where we are going. So with that background, the last um, uh, thing that I'd like to know, what's next, Jimmy Sahib? About my in terms of work uh, the, or my uh, the the next paintings that that you see, or you know, on this wall at the Oasis Center, what's next? See, nowadays I do a lot of abstract paintings also. Colors play with colors and things, and all those paintings are usually done for charities and things, or they are the Allah paintings that I do. That also in my own style, and things. So I keep changing also styles, technique. As I told you, that I take the liberty of changing styles because I call myself a student. So students can take the liberty of changing anything and learning. So I have things that I will paint more abstract, maybe landscapes, maybe these uh, human forms and with colors and all, or maybe architectural, because uh, there's a limit to a human how much he can do. And I think that uh, whatever I did, I tried my best. And I put my 100% effort. And uh, I never wanted to only be an artist. If I only was an artist, I would have lived a different life. I would have had a different kind of thinking, and my approach to everything would have been different. But since I uh, collect money through my art to help people, I have to lower my level of thinking. I have to be at the 
lowest humble level because when you are helping people you cannot show arrogance if i was only an artist maybe i would have thought differently i would have met people or not met people if i wanted or not wanted 90% of a well known artist if you study their life they are like that only but since my life was different my life was to help people my thinking was different so in future i will keep working till allah gives me life because he had given me a second chance at the age of 6 to live so how so I tell us so tell us how what tell us how that because he gave you a second chance because when i was 6 years old both my kidneys had become stone did not function so i had maximum to live for 2 months and there were so many children at that time having the same problem they all died but he spared me i always say that allah spared me for some purpose or some mission in life otherwise why would he uh, spare me and all those children who were at that time sick they died so nature gave me two brand new kidneys in my body so i survived otherwise doctor said there is no other way there was no medical science at in 1960 to keep me alive so i am grateful to nature and my creator that he gave me a second chance to create all these things that is why whatever charity i do i do in his name in the creator's name i don't do charity in my name so so i'm grateful to him for this purpose it was a miracle in my life and uh, i hope we can help uh, more people indeed through my art indeed. and that would be my uh, main mission in my future it's very inspiring uh, to be with you uh, to know you and to look at the lofty ideals that you have which are certainly worth emulating and those of us who are in the non-profit sector have a lot to learn from you and i am blessed to have been able to spend time with you thank you very much for visiting the oasis center uh, the website stay tuned the website called art for philanthropy art number 4 philanthropy.org will soon be launched with at least a hundred of these prints that you will be able to obtain if you like those prints as i said the proceeds of that will go to charitable causes as we move on so once again uh, thank you jee sai for being at the oasis center just a, a word or two about the oasis center this is situated here in the heart of houston where this is a third space it's a space where people can come join in different activities be it art be it intellectual discussion be it non sectarian religious philosophical discussions we do not have any limits the only limit that we have is when we come to the oasis center we come here with an open heart with an open mind accept each other not just tolerate but to understand and create that love among human beings that truly is the mantra of the oasis center and jimmy sai with your paintings here with your presence you have truly added value to the vision and the mission of the oasis center for intellectual development my name is hasan walji i am one of the directors of the oasis center along with my co-directors dr hasan gokal dr maria gokal uh, nazli hamani and mustafa hussein this is our small team that is serving the houston community for their needs in terms of a third space with that we say wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh